Uh, Lord, again, we thank you for this time that we can come together. We, lo we love you, Spring Range. You're such a good God, a gracious God. And we just uh, lift up our farmers and many others. Um, and we, we certainly appreciate that. And we, as we see the prices of food go up, we, we much more appreciate it. We know that you um, are God who really loves us. Now we just ask you to be with us and guide us. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight's meeting is a board work session. The <clears throat> focus of the meeting will be the budget. So, Mr. Costin, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, honorable members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I have the pleasure to present to you the uh, proposed staff draft of the FY23 budget for Nottoway County. Uh, first and foremost, let me say that we would not be standing here this evening at this point this evening if it wasn't for Ms. Tomer. Uh, she has uh, done a very uh, extensive, heavy lift, detailed lift on this budget. Uh, worked through some allergies, and uh, I appreciate everything that she's, she's done, um, in large part because of her institutional knowledge, but then also tolerating some of the changes that I sought to uh, bring to the budget process. So let me begin by outlining some of the process changes. We've done a structural overhaul of the budget. We've created uniform account codes, and we've removed unused, inactive account codes. We've changed category names to reflect actual revenues or expenditures, eliminating the miscellaneous line items. We've transferred account codes to the most appropriate categories in both revenues and expenditures. We've created a new fund for the LRA. This is following advice given many, many times over by Robinson, Farmer, Cox, Associates, our auditors, and most recently, legal counsel. This establishes a rudimentary capital improvements plan. And we included many department heads in this year's budget preparation, giving everyone the opportunity to be involved in the process through formalized and more detailed documents as well as conversations as needed as the, the, the budget process uh, moved forward. I'm happy to tell you the result of all that is the budget is balanced at $45,188,614 using $325,000 from the general fund reserves for capital related projects. There's no change in any tax rates, no increase in real estate, it would remain at 48 cents per hundred and no reduction in personal property tax rate proposed to remain at 375 per 100. Now a prior work session the Commissioner of Revenue suggested relief to the level of 365, $3.65. Based on current trends this has the potential to result in a loss of revenue approximating $125,000. To cover that loss, there are four options that presented themselves. Use reserve funds for operations and not capital expenditures. Cut a like amount in expenses. Find other revenue, such as raising the real estate rate two cents, as the recent Davenport study offers $100,000 is generated by every one cent increase. And the fourth option is some combination of the three just cited. Personal property tax relief from the state remains at $1,049,790, and the county has historically given more credit than was required. There are no new positions being funded in any department requesting or desiring positions. The reassessment is due to be implemented in January 2024. The funding is included in this budget for its conduct, and I'd like to thank the Commissioner of Revenue for bringing that to our attention. We were not looking at the uh, right calendar pace. We updated Nottoway County fee schedules and we proposed new landfill policy uh, including increased user fees at the landfill. Local appropriation of schools 
is $5,804,537, comprised of the required local effort and the required local match of $5,391,691. Total funding for the Amelia Nottaway Technical Center is set at $409,846, an increase of $104,954 over FY22. Now let me continue and give some greater details. The real estate tax base, the real estate taxes are based on the total value of $962,459,106. Personal property taxes are based on total value of $5,071,572. At the outset, the treasurer advised we need to anticipate lower interest rates and earnings for the coming year as renewals occur throughout the year. The Fed has increased rates, but we thought it prudent to remain conservative in our revenue projections. The new DSS lease, this monthly um, cost, uh, facilities cost, and for most people, we just simply refer to it as a lease, uh, is now at uh, $5,243, and this will be reduced to $3,625 and you will have that item on your agenda on May 26. Established a new revenue source to include the HAZMAT rev revenue recovery, filing application fees for appeals to the Board of Building Appeals, which you normally uh, has re recently uh, rest uh, restarted, and appeals to the Zoning Appeals Board of the Zoning Administrator's decision. This was set out in the, co in the ordinance as it's required to be by state law but there was never a fee documented to uh, that, that action. And site plan review fees have also been added. We've increased the turkey shoot permit fee to $20 to offset fuel expense incurred by the sheriff who visits each and every one of the sites before signing off on the permit. Anticipated revenue growth for the landfill uh, is possible if the new policy is adopted. There are some significant concerns with this year's budget in terms of revenue. We have a concern about the sales and use tax related to the 1% grocery tax being considered in the state budget. In short, we don't know how much money we get off of the 1% grocery, uh, uh, the 1% uh, local tax off the of sales, sales tax from groceries. We get it in a lump sum and it's not presented to us in a uh, uh, with a breakdown that would say, well, this much comes from groceries and this much comes from auto parts. Um, it's just a lump sum. We don't know what we don't know here. Concern also for the recovery of funds from the compensation board for the constitutional officers related to the 5% proposed salary increase being considered in the state budget. It's well documented that we don't have a state budget right now. Uh, I've been in contact with uh, an agency head, uh, no, no clear uh, idea of what might come out. I've also um, reached out and heard from Delegate Wright, and he also has said it's basically with the, uh, uh, the budget uh, committee leadership to, to come to some resolution. Um, I have heard through Sheriff Jones, <coughs> representatives of the Compensation Board have, have vindicated to the Sheriff's Association not to expect anything until June. Expenditures. <coughs> Staff has proposed a 5% across the board salary increase, and this is the same as proposed in the state budget for state employees and is in line with other locales. No increase in employer health insurance contribution. Those are at $6,450 for each employee with employee only coverage, maintaining tiered contributions for all other coverages. The employer VRS contribution rate has increased from 1.02% to 2.41%. Anticipated FY22 carryover of the board discretionary fund is estimated to be at $100,000. Combined data processing with county administration may result in some small savings. We have increased the budgeted amount for legal services. We've included funding for the 2024 reassessment to be completed in FY23, as I spoke to earlier. The dispatch budget includes funding facility renovations to include a third dispatch terminal. 
and the funding request for three new dispatch positions has not been funded, and that would have been a budget impact of $148,127. The funding request for two new school resource officers has not been included. Applications have been submitted for three uh, student uh, resource officers, by, for, uh, school resource officers by the sheriff. The budget impact was approximately $244,174. Now this grant funding would pay for 75% of salary and fringes only and the positions would need to be absorbed entirely after four years. The budget impact included the purchase of two new vehicles and associated outfitting. Funding included for continued upgrades to the county's emergency operations center as called for in the ice storm AAR. Matching grant funding included for the emergency shelter upgrade of $36,719. Funding is included for enhanced fire EMS training exercises, a countywide Knox box, this is a facility key box upgrade, in operational medical director services for three of the four volunteer agencies. Distribution method for four for life funding, that's aid to localities, has been amended to include all four volunteer agencies. We fully funded increased contributions request from MedFlight. Anticipated FY22 carryover for courthouse maintenance is estimated at $125,000. Crossroads Community Service Board fully funded at $42,000. Steps fully funded at $20,939. Piedmont, se <clears throat> Piedmont Senior Resources fully funded at $17,499. Funding request for four new DSS positions has not been funded. The budget impact of $191,947. Child services expenses are budgeted at $1 million. This is on path to exceed this amount during FY22. Only actual debt service has been budgeted. Fulfilling the recommendation from Davenport will require an additional $153,134 from the general fund reserves. Staff does not recommend this action at this time due to uncertainties in the present and near-term economic forecast. The Town of Blackstone requests for $50,000 for the construction of a concession stand and scoreboard for the Nottoway Gators is not included. Increase in funding requests for Blackstone Area Bus Service, now $14,000, is an increase of $4,000. $50,000 set aside requests from the Commonwealth Regional Council for Regional Marketing Group has not been funded in this budget, but staff believes that funds from the current year Board of Supervisors discretionary fund can be funded if you choose, and this will be a matter on your agenda May 26. Funding included for the leasing of equipment at the landfill should reduce repair expenses. Funding included to install landline telephones at each waste convenience center for public safety is included. Small amount of funding included for time and a half holiday funding for waste convenience center operation operators has been included. Now you also have a uh, rudimentary capital improvements plan. This includes funding for the county software replacement project at $150,000, and this is 50% lower than what was originally priced uh, in the Davenport report. And funding for phase two of the public safety radio system is included at $175,000. Uh, um, the CIP document that you have before you will show the prior years of expenditures that have been put forward to certain projects, such as the new animal shelter, the current to date plus anticipated expenditures that would occur in the remaining six weeks of FY22, and the total amount anticipated to be expended or obligated uh, in FY22 is 1.5 million, excuse me, uh, one, $1,577,545. And what is expend, uh, proposed to be expended in FY23 is $493,230. You can go across and see each of the years that are, are anticipated for uh, funding, totals for each project, 
and a potential funding source. And as always, we would certainly be reaching out for grants. I will note that this is only the county list. There is a school board list, uh, and Mr. Hyde has been working with the various uh, first responder agencies to develop a, a list for, of their needs. The final item that I wish to speak to tonight before taking your questions regards ARPA funds. No ARPA funds have been budgeted in FY23. However, staff has uh, prepared and provided to you a proposed project list for the use of ARPA funds. So let me walk through this. Your first round of ARPA funds of $1.4 million. The board, on the night you hired me, committed $1.3 million to broadband. That leaves you $100,000. You will have on your agenda in May the um, agreement to enter into with River Street, the formal agreement to enter into River Street, as well as the West Piedmont PDC, and that agreement will commit you to $1.1 million. However, the way the agreement is set up is if there is not a 40% penetration rate in the served area by River Street, we have to make up the difference. And so I would ask you to think about contemplating holding back that $200,000 that looks like you're gonna come out ahead. Let's, let's get a little bit further down the path. You'll note in, in the notes that you have to commit all funds by 2024 and spend all funds by 2026. So we got a little bit of time there to, to work with that. Now your round two, uh, which we anticipate to have in before June 1 is another $1.4 million. This is just a list of items that have been requested, and some of those requests have been specific to please use your ARPA funds to provide this item or that item. That list includes the crew tanker fire apparatus at 200,000, which is what they requested. 200,000 for the steps shelter. This is a homeless shelter to be built in Farmville at 200,000, which is what they requested. One, uh, 10,000 for the Burkeville water line extension necessary to serve the animal shelter. There is a proposed here uh, half million dollar set aside for the Cox Road water line extension if some other opportunity presents itself uh, in conjunction with the town of Blackstone to be able to at least offer up a half million dollars toward that project. The crew library is in need of a roof replacement. We're not sure if that's eligible, but we have it here. And $200,000 has been estimated in needs of repair for the public safety training center. I think most people refer to this as the Blackstone uh, Fire Training Center, the burn building. Um, so then you, that would leave you, uh, if all of those were funded to the level that's laid out here, it's been requested or anticipated based on cost estimates, that would leave you uh, $210,000. Again, these are just uh, a list, not any hard recommendations, but list of items for you to uh, contemplate. And with that, Madam Chairman, I've Conclude my presentation. Be happy to take any questions that the board has. Board members. Ted, it's, um, I guess this is probably not a question as far as budget wise, but I still have a concern about it. How, how are we going to measure this uh, this broadband increase that we should be getting? I think really bothers me. It's like I'm, I'm hoping we're not putting a over a million dollars in something and we don't see any results from it. The way that the, the, the measure, are you, are you talking about the terms of how do, how do you get to that penetration rate? No, no what I'm saying is, you know, we, we committed to it. I know that. Just, I'm just trying to figure out, are we getting our bang for our buck? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's really on one side of the county. You know, it's not, it's really towards, this thing is loud or something, maybe it's me. It's, um, it's really towards Pickett, right? No, it's northeast and southwest. So basically, uh, your district and Mr. Vaughn's district mainly. 
It's basically if you were to draw, like you're going to make an X, your first line would be from northeast to southwest mm -hmm. through the county. Okay. Uh, I think it's 1,089 homes is what it was. That's what was projected. It was, that's, I think that number's about right. Um, you'll have the whole uh, document before you before the next meeting. Um, I can also tell you, having been to a couple of um, programs sponsored by Representative Spanberger, that there's going to be more money coming down mm -hmm. the line for okay. uh, broadband. Because right. I know that that night we talked about, you all talked about uh, back in August, how you'd like to do the whole county. Right. Um, there are going to be some parts of the county, just like when cable c comes in, it's like it's just not worth it for the company to go down that road yeah. uh, unless the citizens are willing to pay for it. Um, but I think that's why they're trying to hit these concentrated, uh, concentrated population areas. As far as the measure, it's a 40%. Um, and I'll use the this, this simple example. If there's a road has 10 houses on it, if they get to, if they sign up for four customers, four houses, right. we're good. If they sign up four or more, we're good. Three, two, or one, or zero, we have to pick it up. And that's where that that fudge factor comes in. Um, as far as measure, I, I do know, I have a, a former associate from VDEM that lives in the southern part of the county. He's using dial-up. Yeah, he I can't know. wait to get you know, something better than yeah. dial-up. We gotta start somewhere, I guess. It just That was just a lot of money, a lot. Austin, one of your bullet points referenced funding for operational medical director services for three to four volunteer, volunteer agencies. What are operational medical director services? They are, as Mr. Hyde has explained to me, um, they're the quality control folks for your EMTs um, that uh, roll with the various fire departments and or the rescue squad. If I may, is that a fair assessment? The, the only physician over is by each office. You can't operate without a physician over the Thank you. Thank, right. thank you, Chief Toma. And we have three companies that have uh, agreed to go in under one physician and one company that has sought to go uh, on its own. And this is funding only for the one physician that serves the three. John, let me ask one more quick question. Be good. Yeah. So, hey, go on. I'm trying to find my budget statement. <laughs> oh, it's under here. So, um, you know, we were we were all, all in attendance of that. Um, with the school board. So the ANTC, we, we made a commitment. Let me find that thing again. Local appropriation of school. Funding for ANTC was 409000 That's an increase of 104. So, 105, might as well say. So, um, tell y'all, I, I, I kind of got mixed up on what programs they got out there. So, what do they have out there to y'all team? At, at ANTC? Yeah. They have a culinary program, right. uh, automotive repair. LPN, nursing, nursing. Uh, cosmetology, those are the ones that I can think of right off the top of my head. Having, I've just been through the building one time. Okay, so so what, what, I guess that's what, it, what the reason why they increased, because they increased the programs out there? Is that what I'm saying? They okay. said they will go bring in that's my understanding. two. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this is the increase, so they bring in two more. They which said was they talking about like, eight, like um, I think like, make, like eight, early five, childhood and, and what was the other one? Was it um, HVAC or something? They talked about how HVAC would have been valuable because they didn't, they didn't that some of the, a couple of the members questioned the value of the early childhood. I just couldn't remember the other one. I'm just trying to um, have it, man. I, I mean, it here. so you basically you're looking at $100,000 for every program, every two programs? I'm sure the numbers on the programs vary depending on the what, what, what material you have to have to support. Right. Yeah. But uh, I recall asking the question, every program results in an increase of, of expenditures, and the answer was yes. Right. Building trades. 
So build it was building trade. So, oh, no, that's, go ahead. That's what I was. To, just to clarify, so I understand that we have committed to every year additional funding for two programs. No? I'm not sure. Can I, can I say what I voted on? Please, yeah. <laughs> Good question. I I said we would. I made a commitment that we would that we would support the ANTC program. Not thinking that thing is going to start, brrr, <laughs> which which is is what it's doing. I guess you know. Um, so that year we committed so much money for the. I mean, I think you were in that meeting. I was there. But you, your memory and my memory. <laughs> What, what did we say that night? We would commit so much money, right? Did we? Did, did we identify the money? No, know. we just said we would support it support because it. we thought it was, I don't know, John? <laughs> well, let's ask Sherman. He got a good... <laughs> up at the Burkeville School? What was it? Sherman wasn't there. That's right. Oh, well, he was there. You're he right. He missed that meeting. Uh -huh. um, <sighs> we said we would support it. I don't think we gave up. My recollection was this, guys. We were in support of the schools moving forward. There was a mention of a five-year plan, I believe, back in 2020 mm -hmm. and during the election run in 19. Well, we two years behind that because they still ain't gave us one. That's true. They ain't gave us no five-year oh, plan. Oh, you're right. It was going to be a, that, that's right. We were going to commit so they could get it rolling, and then they was going to give us a five-year plan. And they were supposed to let us know by the end of the year. That, that's right. And that end of the year was two years ago. Yeah, that's right. Well, so, and I'll go back to this budget here. They haven't even agreed on a budget. I mean, they're not in solidarity with their budget themselves. It was a 3-2, as I understand, school board. We just got some information texted over to uh, Ms. Toma. Uh, building trades in early childhood education. Yeah, right. I just told it. Oh, yes. okay. All right. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Lynn found it over. But again, I have to, you know, I have to kind of defer to someone who was here. Um, I was not. Miss Tomer uh, was. She's advised it was kind of open ended, you know, um, as far as how many programs, you know, what, what, is, what does support for expansion mean in terms of money or in terms of programs? It wasn't very clear. Well, I believe the intent was mentioned two per year. Yes, two two classes per year. But mm -hmm. intent, five year plan and estimates aren't a plan. That's a conversation. Need something in writing. Has a can you I don't know who's texting, but can you text back it <laughs> so I'm just wondering, just curious, um is Amelia uh Amelia County um so I'm taking it. That's sixty. That hundred four thousand nine fifty four is sixty percent of a number, because they're supposed to be paying forty percent. Is that, is that what y'all understand? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. I you're, just want to verify that. That's that. your. I just want to see if Amelia County is um, dedicated as much as Nottaway County. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to figure. I understand, Mr. Right. Bowen. That that's the increase of one hundred four. The funding is at four hundred. Excuse me. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Right. No problem. But technically, I'm, I'm thinking then that's that 409 that's, is 104 is our increase. So has Amelia also in? Right. That's what I'm going to find out. Or we just or we are solving all the increase. That's a good question. Because Amelia County won't with us that night, right? No. It was just not. Okay. They were going to meet with them shortly yeah, thereafter, right. and yeah. were going to get back to us. Yeah. Right. That's kind of where they it was left. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, we we will wait for a response. And I'm just just that's something that. Do and do we have any? I guess there are no records. We don't we don't know anything about as far as the employment of the students that graduate from the technical center that, and the trades that are being provided. Are there records? The overall effectiveness of the program. Okay. Okay. You're looking for the success of it, like some type of, type of, some type of data to show Percentage. that 15 people went in and 
12 people found jobs or something like that. That's what you think. Well, Dr. Grimes told y'all at that work session that they are obligated to track the students for so many years, did she say, a couple of years after they graduate? So well, those numbers nice may actually those, exist. It'd be nice to have those numbers yeah. to see. All right, can I ask a crazy question? <clears throat> All right. And, and Mr. Vaughn, you probably remember this too. All right. You had an assistant principal. Mr. Hurt had an assistant principal, Mr. Glover, Mr. Uh, Johnson. All right. When I went through a when I went through the Votech Center, 1991, Nottaway took two buses packed. Morning and night. Amelia brought two packed morning and evening. Okay. So they were being funded. Does anybody recall when, if not, in other words, when ANTC essentially, whatever, whatever happened to it, shut down or reduced their numbers or whatever, did Nottaway County pull funding or did they just move funding around? Now, if they pulled funding, where did they put it? Where did they put the funding for your assistant principal? Where did they put the funding for Mr. Hurt's assistant principal? Where did all that money get moved to now needing all this money now? Where did they put it? Because they saying that they need these other positions. I mean, right now you're saying you need a social service worker. We got a new director in the social services department sitting right over there that is moving forward. And I can't understand why you would put a social services worker in the school system and divert this system right here. Would you want somebody that you can control? You want a social worker that you got on your payroll controlling? I don't think that's a good idea. School's on enough scrutiny right now. So they've had this money rolling over year after year. They've had the money to hire the assistant principals. In the carryover, it's there. Y'all have seen it every year. Why didn't they hire them? Either, yeah, so we're, we're, you know, we're, just, we're, we're, yeah, we're just talking. So, I mean, normally, like what I do in, with the state, if I want a different position, I got to freeze a position. Mm -hmm. I call it freezing. In other words, you know, you know, you freeze that, and then you hire. You know, but then, but that money still stays in the budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm asking. Did Nottaway County cut the school's budget when ANTC took a nosedive? Did they cut their budget when the vice principals took off? And if they didn't, where's that money at? I understand that things have changed over the years and things got more expensive, but I can't imagine that they had 10, 12 teachers over there plus the vice principals. And where's it at? Plus the cost. Another number that would probably help us with our decision making too is um, now that John, you, you tapped my brain making it work. So, like what we what, what I do is like well, what, the data. You know, we we got to make decisions off some type of data, and I think mm -hmm. that helps. Mm -hmm. um, how many positions have been vacant for five years? How, how many how many what, how many positions are vacant? How long they've been vacant? Because if this has been vacant for so many years and it's been budgeted, then did you ever really need them? Right. That's. Uh, What's that say? And I'm not. And I know. I, 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 when I look at Dennis Sherman, he's. You know, I know what he's doing. You starting to micromanage. I'm not. I just want to make decisions off a good num number, Sherman. I, I can read your brain kicking down. I know what you're doing. I'll give you one. <laughs> I'll give you one other that I haven't heard an answer to yet, and I don't know if y'all have gotten it. Where is the final up number from the state? On number of students, and no, that ain't, they ain't got that yet. On that, you're right. I mean, you're right. because the state is projecting what 1702 and 1703. Now, let's keep in mind the state writes that check. I don't want to go off of a. Um, we hope that's not accurate. We hope that's not the number. The state's going to write you a check according to that number. So you're talking about what thirteen thousand dollars per student? You're talking about a difference in forty-seven, forty-eight students. It's a lot of money. That you hope the number's not right, that don't work for me. I don't think it works for the taxpayers either. Madam Chair, I have an answer to the Amelia funding question. Um, as of right now, there is some contention in Amelia about funding two classes. So I asked, does that mean that at this point, not always footing 100%? She said, possibly of the early childhood class, they are on board with the building trade class. Okay. 
Well, should these surveys they're doing, should they be surveying, both schools be surveying the students at the same time? If they're required to do it? I would think so. But then again, I, I don't know. I'm just asking questions because I won't hear it. And I apologize. I was enjoying myself in Mexico. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I see your leg messed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quit looking at my leg. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> so, see, you made me forget what I was going to ask. You wanted to meet, and that's the last I heard. That's the last I, I said. I think you were referring to the poll. Uh, was that the interest poll that you were talking about with the, the way they were survey the students to see what their oh, interests Oh, yeah, were? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Does I understand it was it was said that they are required to give those uh, surveys, but are they required to stick by the results? Who makes the decision on what class is going out other than just a poll from students? I guarantee you, if you poll students and ask them what they want for lunch, it ain't going to be green beans and meat. It's going to be like macaroni and cheese and sweets and stuff. Yeah, not a I mean, somebody has to make a decision at some point. So, all right, so look, all right, um, Katie and Ted, let me ask y'all something. I know we've been a little informal. I should have probably just be more Mr. Costin, but he wants this This is a work session, so <laughs> don't be offended. Don't be offended. Who you're to. We're good. So, so all right. If you, I mean, let's look at the let's look at the budget clock. Let, let's say we. So t this is this is going back. I think you said this before, John. That's why I'm saying this. You know, let's look at the budget clock. You know, say we approve everything. Okay, we approve everything. All right. Well, here it is. If you're gonna hire some principals, they're not gonna start work until August, September. So you've already saved money in so many positions for that physical year. Mm -hmm. My question is, what, why don't we, if we do keep the funding just like it is, have we ever just done that and then they said, I said, look, y'all hire who you want to because we still think there's enough in the budget. And then if they say, have we ever had a situation where somebody they needed like February, March and said, Hey, I told you we needed more money, and then we give them more money. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, I that happened that over in the media, and they cleaned the house. <clears throat> who who cleaned? You clean? don't go. You don't go back and, and ask for more. Say what? Really? Well, not if you do your budget right. Well, I mean, they clean house on the on the board of supervisors. I, I'm, school board? I'm not gonna get into the school no. the school thing, but uh, with their budget. Steve, they try to, based on their enrollment, so much money from the state, you have a minimum that you have to, to put up for that, and you know this. Oh, I see what you're saying, because you got to let the state know what you're doing. That's right. Okay. I, okay. That makes, I think that makes a little bit of sense to me. One thing, I just... Clarification, I think we went over this when we met this week. So when we look at this required minimum funding and um, their measures of the county's ability to pay for education through different sources of revenue, mm -hmm. one of those is local sales tax, which we don't know right now if we might have this 1% reduction or whatever, right? The, the or the, gro the whatever grocery, grocery, the grocery. Grocery. Yes. It's on yeah. the groceries. It's right. on the groceries. And we don't know what that could amount to. We don't know what it could amount to. We, so don't, know, if, we don't know what we're getting off of groceries right now because okay. it comes in as a lump but sum. But what if that amounts to something significant? And so one component of this calculation now is significantly reduced, and we've set aside money based on a much higher figure how do we have the ability to go back in and make amendments to the budget? Same thing with the calculation of the um, student population. ADM. If, if that is much less in, in actual, the actual population in the school year is much less than what they are as projecting and are included as part of our funding, our minimum funding, what are, what are our alternatives for going back and saying, well, then we're not going to provide the same amount, the amount of money based on projections that were inaccurate. We can go back and amend the budget. You know, how much we have over the school board and adjusting their budget and their allocations, um, I'm not certain about that. Um, 
we would kind of have to look in more inward for I would anticipate I would anticipate worst case scenario we'd have to look more inward first before we uh, sat down now you know I'm sure we could sit down with the school board and say okay the economy's tanked you know, we, we didn't get this revenue these numbers were off we have to make adjustments so what's it what will the state do they're using projections right now from the state and if the state finds that they've had some significant reductions or their the, things are impacted, is the state going to come back and say, "Whoops, we're giving you or we're going to give you less money than what you've projected?" <clears throat> the school's finance director, who I'm communicating with, by the way, um, she's saying the caboose bill. Each general assembly session is what determines the final funding for that fiscal year based upon true ADM. When? She says, as of right now, they have yet to pass the bill for 23, and they have until June 30th. Yeah, they one time they passed it like midnight. Yeah. Back in 2006, I believe it was. Um, that's a good question, Lynn, but you know, we, we do budget amendments, but every time we do a budget amendment, normally as we pull in money out the general fund to give it the amendment, we, we, I don't think we've ever had anybody say, hey, we won't do an amendment and give you some money back, have we? No, there's been reductions <laughs> with the budget, but it's been not those scenarios. I feel like the schools and the education of the children are one of the county's biggest priorities, but we're also committing making commitments for large, large amounts of money, not having information on which to base our decisions. That's part of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Until the state decides, when they <coughs> decides on their budget, you really can't finalize anything. Now, Mr. Bowen, you and I agree on that because in conversations that we had, I told them that I understand we need to pass something so we can pay the bills. Yeah, we're going to pass it. Goodbye. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I think the safe play is passing what we absolutely know and need and making budget adjustments during the course of the year as needed. I think that's safe. And I think you got, as, as it comes in, it's factual. I mean, even if it comes in and we make a budget adjustment prior to July 1, but at least we're doing something with facts and data. So I, I don't disagree with you at all with that, not at all. Um, one thing I, I will say this, uh, to your point there, uh, Madam Chair, something that was sent, the growth in administration staff compared to students. I think y'all may have seen that chart. The growth in administration is like up 88%. Why are we paying for administrative staff when the students are dropping like this? You remember that chart? You remember seeing that chart? Mm -hmm. So that, that's where the trend is going. The trend is paying more money at administrative staff and it's not going to the students. And they're still losing students. And I mean, you're talking what, 13, 13,000? I mean, you're talking roughly 50 students, and you're talking about over half a million dollars off from what they're 1750 and 1702 or 03, whatever it was. Thank you. So our required local minimum, the, the two components total, what, 5.8 million, is that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a minimum. That's the minimum. Yes. And what have we typically been doing over? Okay, 5.3. Yeah, that, that's the and in prior years, just can you tell me how much over that we've done? We typically do more. The only no. we do not. Mm -mm. No. Th that's another. We used way. to get criticized. That's, that's another way of looking at yeah. that too. When, that's, when you only do the minimum, what are you saying to right people now, right? who about our yes, children? Man. We ought to do more than the minimum. Yeah, yeah. one time I think we were like... Uh, Was that like 1.4 or something over? No, well, we were like, they, they, they compared us in the state. We were like, uh, they did the counties and cities, you know, 96 counties, but we were like, a, I mean, like 130-something 
and then we started giving more. You remember we kept getting out there with other local men. In other words, mm -hmm. we, we were like down in the low percentile big time on both the local match. Mm -hmm. yeah, we and then were. we so we improved the local match. I haven't heard, I haven't seen that chart anymore since I, we, I mean, we, we still get criticized, but I, they used to throw that chart out as pretty, pretty strong. I ain't seen it now. I wonder where we are in that. But. So the answer to the question of is the required local effort affected by a population less than projected, it can be. A lot of uncertainty, right? That's what we definitely have. We got some writing and uncertainty. <laughs> So tonight the goal is we need to advertise something for a public hearing. Really, right, Mr. Costa? Right. That's the next agenda item is right. the board's consensus if you want to direct staff to proceed uh, and, and we kind of need to proceed to advertising a proposed budget. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we would recommend advertising June 8th, having your public hearing during your regular Board of Supervisors meeting, which is June 16. You have to have a seven-day gap between your public hearing and your, uh, your vote. So it would be a special meeting in June uh, to come back and um, act on the budget. Pending state approval budget. Well, as Mr. Bowen you said, if it's June 30, when they decide to do something, so the, the, as you know, state law requires the locality to have a budget by July 1. Yeah, right. They're not giving us any leeway this year, even mm -hmm. though they're taking their right. time. So yeah. the staff recommendation would be uh, a consensus this evening, and you can take formal action at your next meeting to say advertise June 8, public hearing during your regular meeting on June the 16th, in a special meeting June 23 or some other date before the 30th to adopt a budget. Um, and of course, what we're proposing, what we're advertising is a proposed budget. Um, and then once you've had your public hearing, you have opportunities to do the numbers around. Madam Chair, is there somebody can run by you guys real quick? It was on here. Um, I just want to be clear on something because when you're talking about running this advertisement, this is for what we got here basically without modifying anything until, until we hear from the public. But I do want to address something, that, and it's, uh, it, it's out of the community pretty hard. Um, the, I, have, I would prefer to give the sheriff his dispatchers. Um, and I would also prefer to give the bonus to the first responders. And I do have, and, and I think all the staff knows that, you know, how, far, how much I stood behind them as far as the uh, salary study and all that went. But are we going to look at these 5% raises without evaluations? It's just, you know, I, I, that, it's not a knock on them in any way, shape, or form. I, I just, I feel like, you know, at one point we were talking about fixing that policy and having a procedure to do this, and I, and I think we um, we should consider that. Madam Chairman, members of the board, if I could, if I could answer a couple of those. Um, as I said, when I first indicated a 5% increase, that is a competitive retention step because it looks like the state budget is going to go with 5%. Um, if we know something different, you scales back to four, we can scale back to four. But a lot of the localities, I know for a fact, Amelia's county administrator proposed 7% across the board. Um, most of the folks have settled in or around that 5% mark. So uh, for me, it's a retention issue in terms of trying to retain staff uh, at, at, throughout, the, throughout the organization. Um, the uh, dispatchers, um, uh, Mr. Rourke and I talked earlier uh, today, and of all the positions that I had to put a line through, those will th those were the ones that hurt the most because they um, serve the whole community. You know, we've, we've talked about this public radio system improvement. It's it's from when you pick up the phone 
and dial 911 and all the radios in between, you know, the first responders, law enforcement, fire rescue, state police, mutual aid, uh, it, it impacts all of that. Um, but that's a, that's a critical first point and critical first piece in that radio communication system are those dispatchers. Just don't have the money unless you want to dip in to reserves um, and, and cover it from, from reserves. And I'm reluctant, my advice would be don't go into reserves for operational expenses because they won't be there one year if you start, start down that slippery slope. And again, I've already given you my position. I've already shared with you legal's position about giving bonuses to volunteers. You know, I took the hit. I understand. The reality is you're giving bonuses to people who aren't on your payroll, and you open up a lot of liability issues in employee-employee relationships. So I've made the argument. It's, it's the board's decision. You, um, let me just, excuse me, Madam Chair, I was going to ask a question about that. So, but we, you, technically we could give a certain amount of funds to each fire department, and then the fire department can, can call it bonuses if they which, like. Which, well, what they do with the money once we've turned give it to over them. to them, that's their own operation. <clears throat> so, do, do we, because we talked a little bit, we've had some pre-budget meetings with, uh, with you, um, myself and you, um, Mr. Costa and, and, and Katie, do we uh, do we have enough money in either a discretionary fund or something this year that we can just go ahead and do that, and not not budget for it next year? I think we could it look like about a hundred thousand dollars that we're sitting on in that. I would say yes, except for um, you've got six weeks left in the fiscal year. You don't know what could happen. We're talking about carrying over a portion of that to offset cuts, you know, reductions in the fiscal year twenty three budget. Um, yeah, we, we I don't know a couple how you things. could. I, I don't know how you could commit to that without really knowing the dollar figure. Right. If, well, if you could get that, you know, you could make a more confident answer. Well, it, well, just for consideration, then, if it's available after six weeks, if nothing pops up, I think that'd be a good place for some of that to go. Um, I, I, th I think it's fair. It, it's, okay, I see what you're saying. If, if, it's, it, if it's available. Could you do some research and find out what that number is? Well, we can research it from the fiscal side. I'd also want to research it from the legal side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not again. If you want to increase your donation to each of the companies with, uh, you know, a suggested use, I guess you could do that. I'd like to go run that by by legal, but yeah, for you, you for you all to directly pay people a bonus. I didn't say word bonus. Well, I never said the word bonus. I, Mr. Mr. Yeah, he Mr. did. Ward, I, I didn't did. say that. I, you're right. All right. I, I said we call it what we want to, you know. Um, but that was something I didn't see we, either. We, 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 I don't know. Fire department retention, something. I don't know. I don't know. But, but legally, you need to find out. You're right. I'm not going to argue that. I'm just I'm curious. Mr. Costin, I do agree with you that dipping into reserves for operational expenses is not a good strategy. I agree. I agree with that, too. Yes. If, if you'll recall Mr. Rose's uh, presentation on Davenport, he talked about one of the localities up in Northwest that did that year after year after year, and then one night they were hit with a 20% real estate increase because they were broke. Uh, Madam Chair, the other... The other, the other thing I had was I did not see anything in here for an increase to emergency services. Is there an increase in here to the squads and the fire departments for this year? We worked in yes. an increase. Well, let me, okay, let me try to explain this. Again, this is what I was not here for. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe I did say that we increased. There was a miscalculation last year. Mm -hmm. And the division of monies of, of funds was based on four when it should have been based on fire, five. Mm -hmm. That's three fire companies, a rescue squad, and the uh, rescue squad that you know runs out of Berkeley. Berkeley, right? Okay. The calculation was done on four and not five. This year we've run the calculation on five, but to make the numbers work, those that got funded last year have had to take a slight decrease. Mm -hmm. in order to make up for what 
Burkeville didn't get last year. Next year, the plan is to level set so that all five get the same amount. Okay. But at the end of the but day. It, but, you're, but it is in here. The, the contributions are in here. Okay. And it's, what was the percent, was there a percentage increase or? Actually, it would be a decrease on four of them, right? In operational funding or equipment funding, no. There is no increase. What we did include was more along the lines of incentives, and that was the OMD um, software upgrades, Knoxbox upgrades, things that potentially would have you know, had to have been funded individually by the agencies. Well, well, can I ask one more question with that then? Were the departments satisfied? I don't know. I don't, I don't think anybody's going to be satisfied with this budget. But <laughs> yeah, right. we, haven't, we, we yeah. haven't gone back and asked, you know, are you okay with this, with this number? Mm -hmm. Because this may not be the number. You all may make changes. Right. right. So, so you know what that made me think, Madam Chair? If, let's say, Blackstone had 20 volunteers, they wanted to, you know, we, we're not giving bonuses, but that's what we talked about doing the money. Okay. So they got 20, some else crew got 10, Buffalo got five. They're not going to get the equal amount of money either. We have, we have, that's, that's how I was able to come up with that calculation last time, the 47,000. Right. Because the first responders includes the law enforcement, which you could call that a bonus because they are employees. But the other ones we took from the membership list that we uh, had in our office through Mr. Mr. Hyde. So, see, I still say in the future, I just feel like sometime sooner or later we need to have a separate budget for emergency services, totally. You can do a separate tax as well. Right, and then that's where um, buddy, Buddy's salary comes out, but that's mm -hmm. what, and then they, he meets with the, he's a coordinator, and he right. meets with all the fire departments, and they figure out together what they need and what's the priority. You with me? Mm -hmm. And we don't want that, 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 that budget of that emergency services to get down to zero. We need to keep money in there, you know. Um, and that way, once you got that budget, then they can go and have meetings and decide, okay, we're going to get some of this, and, and what they call it is what they call it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but Buddy would have the most, I mean, we would give the funding, and we would come up with the tax, but Buddy would, and Buddy and the county administrator would have the authority to send that money out, and then mm -hmm. we see the reports or whatever. I mean, that's, that's what I feel like we need to get there sooner. Yeah. Like, we can't get there this year, but we got to do that. Yes. Yeah, that needs to be worked right. out. I don't want to belabor the whole school budget, but if what we are budgeting, 5.3, is the required local minimum, and the state sets that, so really there's no need to discuss this. We're, we're doing what we have to do. Is that right? Well, I asked Ms. Meyer, um, or... or pretty much said that, you know, what everyone really is trying to get an answer to is, will the school inform the county that that true up number was less, meaning they needed less funding? Her answer was a simple yes. So. All right, and what did you ask her? Will the school Will the school inform the county that they need less funding than what was requested based on that, if, if it's effect, that RLE is affected by student population? Okay. But as it stands now, am I right? We don't really have a choice. This is what we have to, to budget. It's a required, required minimum. Is that correct? It's always been my understanding, Ms. Mayor. That's correct. Yeah, you, we got we to gotta come up with a number that appropriate for the school. Once we do that and we vote for it, it's, it crosses that line into the school system. But we're not really coming up with a number. They've given us the number. If you want to stay with the well, minimum. <laughs> If you, stay with the minimum. If, if you want to stay good with point the what's your number who wants to stay with the minimum <laughs> right I'm, I'm not going to get into the school discussion but it, who it, wants to stay with the minimum these are our children yeah it's somebody a, else's children but ours so if you don't or do you have so a complete understanding of how they're spending the money pretty much but i'm not going into i was going to say you want to share that with us <laughs> I think I'm hoping that the Davenport review, financial review, is going to help give us some real insight into this. All right. 
Um, it's, it's obvious we don't understand some things. Like, we, or, let me say we. I, I don't. Sure I, don't either. I don't either. I don't either. Right. So, but every year we've not. We've just given the minimum. Is that correct? What you just? No. 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 You're no. Give no. I thought I at one point it was minutes. you did you did that's what I was trying to say I thought it was 1.4 million over so you at one asked point. every year were they given more than the minimum and that's not correct uh, but there have been years there have been that years. they have last been year well, if you consider last the, year was done by the required local effort that was provided the only thing additional that they received was the 340 some for ATC and what about the capital rollover? As as you said, we, yeah, but they received. We were that for we, we were just giving a little bit above minimum for years. That's why we were on that. We were like 135th in the state. It's like only 140 school systems. They right. did the cities and the counties. We were way down low, and then we started giving more money. Um, A and T C. We can name one on two. We started increasing the funding, and we've been maintaining that. But I haven't. I, that's another data thing that you can look at. Look, there's a there's a thing out there that shows who gives. What like counties and how they give over and how much and where they rank, rank it. with the other school system. Well, well, uh, and, and we don't want, we don't want to rank with some of the southwest counties. Well, I think but with, with uh, our, abil our ability to pay is better than theirs. Right. Well, I think what uh, Madam Chair is talking about. I, I believe when when she got here in 2020, she was given some of the same information I was given. And that we were paying at that time was like somewhere around 1.4 million over the required local right. effort. And I never saw that figure on paper. And I don't remember ever agreeing oh, to that figure. I don't ever remember, remember that, John. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We we were told That's that. That's what they were told. Yeah. We were they told that when we got mm -hmm. 1.4. Well, that, 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 we did better than I thought we did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like six hundred some thousand or four hundred. I don't know. I, I thought it was in that neighborhood. Yeah, because that's the reason why I kept hitting. Well, I know where there's some money sitting at. <laughs> I'm only responsible yeah. for the current year budget. It had to be. <laughs> it must have been after I left. It had to be. I, I will say, Madam Chair, I don't, I don't know that it helps the scenario or makes anybody feel better, but from my recollection, every year that there was an increase in local funding, there was there was a justification. It wasn't just a matter of right. Let's give the school more funding. Yeah, like one year was it was one hundred seventy five thousand it was one hundred seventy five thousand dollars to keep Berkeley School open. Yes, that's correct. Yes. We, and we gave that. We gave and they closed it. it. And they closed, closed it. it. <laughs> yeah. We gave one hundred and seventy one because you suggested we give one hundred and seventy one. That's right. You're right because I was being they give nasty. The exact same but you did that. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't let based you forget on, that. You know, based on their what, numbers. What you were provided. Right. Yeah. The so, plan of action that was. So provided. so here's what here's what the Davenport I think can help us and and Lynn I, I, I'm. And, and I hope I'm teaching you something about funding. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. So this is. So here's the question. That, so that year we gave 171,000 right. more to keep Murphy School open. And the next year we did the same thing. Level we, we, funded. We, let, we oh, kept. They, well, they were level funded. So we kept. So that was that increase. We maintained that increase instead of going. Ah, the school's closed. Give me the 171 back. That's that's what you. Okay. Yeah, so you figure two years, you three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Where's that? So, <laughs> you d define for me just so I can make sure I understand. When you say level funding, that means this, we're going to budget the same funding this year that we did prior year. Is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that would have changed that is the, the example of this year or fiscal year twenty three, where the the composite index changed that percentage. And that's why. So we're up. And that's the only reason. Yes. And only because the required minimum is up. That percentage, yes. And that is established by the state. Yes. Yes. Now, see, that brings some clarification to me as well, simply because, like you and I were told, we were kicking in one, the county was supposed to be kicking it's, in 1.4 million over, and we're sitting there going, well, if we're paying that much over and we're going to keep level funding it, then we're already covered on this increase. Well, well maybe y'all are all right about you. Okay, so we... First of all, Ted, we need a bulletin board right here, okay? <laughs> so I can write on it. So I'll, I'll speak to the judge. I'll <laughs> speak to the judge. judge about that. Right. So <laughs> think about it. So I don't know what year that was. It was Berkeley School. So let's just pretend. Let's round it off. One hundred seventy thousand. Okay. So we gave one hundred seventy thousand to keep the school open. Next year we gave one hundred. We maintained that. Then a couple years later, y'all get on the board, and then we decided to increase A and T C. So that number is included more with the increase ANTC, right? No. Mm -hmm. no. Level funding was, 
was not to include the ANTC. Okay, so ANTC wouldn't include it. Level exactly. fund. Okay, but the, but the 175. Your level funded is of the required local matching. I, I think Mr. Pettis made a great point when he was just simply asking to hold them accountable. Check where the funding is. So they're not asking for anything above required minimums this year? No, originally they were, and just discussions okay. with Mr. Costin and Dr. Grimes and Ms. Meyer and I, we, we worked it out that that probably wasn't okay. a good idea. So the only increase we're looking at is the ANTC? Something, 104 or whatever it is for ANTC. And they had noticed this, that is not part of the public school system, but they rely on the funding, that's right. The, the ANTC funding is not included in the required local effort calculation. Gotcha. Well, Ted, I wanted to, well, what you were talking about there, it's not that I'm opposed to the 5% raises. Mm -hmm. I would just like the county to get on an evaluation schedule. That is, uh, <laughs> that's all. That's one of the many things that we have on the list from Mr. Anzavino. Uh, I'd like to think that perhaps we've knocked solar off. Perhaps we've knocked the boundary line adjustment off. Uh, perhaps we've knocked off this budget. Uh, I think we're close to finishing up redistricting. Um, you know, we had uh, two hires that we had to do this year, which was everything from write the job description to recruit to interview to onboard. So um, I think we've, we're chipping away at that long 52 item list, which has mm -hmm. grown to 58, 59. Um, that uh, process, so, so the board knows, um, in, the, in the retention of, of, or we also had to go out and you know, clean up the procurement of Sands Anderson. In that RFP, we included uh, this project as part of that RFP so that we would have the people who might have to defend a personnel decision actually help write the personnel policy. What they've come back with is about a 30-page questionnaire uh, that we just haven't had time to work through. Um, but we have to sit down with all the constitutional officers, work through that questionnaire. They take that information. We should have a, per a personnel policy. Once we have that personnel policy, which will address the role of, of evaluations and then what you do with evaluations, how you use the evaluations in terms of disciplining or and or uh, granting or denying you know, increases. Um, uh, I've heard you say the wheels of government turn slow, but they are they are turning slowly. Yeah. The, uh, and the board members, only two things I have beyond that now is if there is any way, any way we can work it out to get those dispatchers what at the sheriff's office. I would I would love to see that happen. And then um, the other big question that's been out there, it would be I'm willing to do what we need to do, whether it's through the ARPA funds or any other way to make sure that uh, crew fire department is gonna get that two hundred thousand dollars for that tanker. Because that, that tanker is gonna be on every structure fire in this county. Yeah, and that's on the list. And as I understand it, I believe uh, all the all the other chiefs have supported um, that request as well for that funding to be sent over to crew fire department. So, yeah, I see on the worksheet that y'all put that as a possibility, right? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a, that's on the list. I agree with you, John. I agree with you. Um, we just we can't at least you know if we had no, if we yeah, had the more. ARPA funds now. In the office. We could roll those into mm -hmm. um, into the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Tomer has suggested that perhaps ARPA should be its own separate fund, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. as Mr. Bowen has suggested. You know, fire mm -hmm. services, public mm -hmm. safety yes. services should be its mm -hmm. own separate fund. Uh, it would be a short-lived fund because let's let's be mindful. ARPA is going to go away. Right. Yeah. Right. That's right. So right. this this last 1.4 may be it. Right. And you've got to put it down. You know, you got to put it to bed in 2026. Well, is well, and, and I mean, I appreciate that. The only other thing that just popped in my head was about the dispatchers. Is there any grant to the CRC that we can look at? Anything with these dispatchers? Anything to get them out there? I'll ask, but I'm not aware of anything. I mean, I, I this, mean is, this is personnel, and they usually don't get grants. Okay. For personnel yeah. to do what's considered a routine function. Now, you might get a grant if you're doing a startup project. Mm -hmm. um, but typically, 
And because I, I mean, and I'll say it, I'll go on record and say it. I will spit out the big T I word when it comes to health, safety, and welfare tax increase. I, I will believe do that. what you're looking at, uh, if you turn on to the second page under expenditures. For all intents and purposes, you're talking $150,000. For the two dispatchers? Well, uh, three. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. That's that was a mistake. Three. Under expenditures, three. about the eighth bullet down. Gotcha. So you might as well say 150 um, TI, meaning tax increase. Guys, I'm, I, I'm two cents on the real estate. Yeah. Does that budget impact for the facility renovations or, rather than the dispatch position? It's the installation of a third terminal. In but three, that's not the, that doesn't apply to the cost of the three positions, right? That's the impact of the terminal. What is the dispatch terminal? It's basically a computer screen that's tied into a radio. So this would be adding one more? Be adding one more station. So if he doesn't get the three new positions, does he need the third dispatch terminal? Well, we, we had that. Oh, is he? I'm sorry. He just snuck in here. There, Sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on up. But I, my, my, my inclination is if you have a busy situation like an ice store, um, you might have to have, because of call volume, you may have to have that third person sitting in there, so having that third terminal is helpful. How many dispatches do you have in there? Uh, okay. Um, what we're looking at is basically trying to get three people there, scheduled there all the time. Um, that way we can hopefully keep two people there. Right mm -hmm. now we're working one dispatcher a lot of times, like all day today pretty much we had one dispatcher sitting there. Um, we hired those extra three we can get we can schedule three there. There's always going to be training. Somebody's going to be off doing something. But at least we're guaranteed to have two persons sitting in there. And that works into the third terminal, because every now and then you're going to have the third person there. It's not a full terminal. Um, that's the thing about it. It's not a full terminal either. But they can answer the phone, take 911 call. Madam Chair, my, I, my, I stand on my position there. Any, anything we can do to make this happen? Sheriff, what is the uh, what is the uh, and, and and we we made that a priority. I don't know last year, Sheriff, or it might be a year for last. The school resource officers, what did they do in the um, summertime? Uh, basically, just fill in the roads, uh, work the roads. Okay. Uh, and there's some school stuff that still goes on in the summertime. It involves kids like who we had last year. Uh, with the COVID and all, there was a lot of things the school was doing outreach. Right. And they were involved in that. I got you. But a lot of times during the summer. We, they helped me a lot because, like right. I said, my guys can take vacation and we still have coverage. Yeah, you got it. I got it. So you use them fill in. Do, do they still have summer school, y'all? I, mean, mm -hmm. I used to attend to yeah, that, right? Yeah, they still have summer school. I used to miss a lot of summer. <laughs> <laughs> we still had summer school last year. That's all okay. I got you. <laughs> so let me, if I could, just so folks know, um, you, and you know from the, the uh, Davenport uh, study, the financial study, that the tax rate of 48 cents on 100 for real estate, the median in this area is 63. So you're well below the median. Um, so if you wanted to cover this 148 and you wanted to go to tax increase, I think that's what you meant by TI, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that two cents on the real estate would cover it for you. Um, and you'd be course that would raise the median a little bit but you'd still be well below what's the current median between as you know from the Davenport report all the surrounding jurisdictions and then some let me ask oh, go ahead, go ahead. One more, just my own clarification the, the budget impact of 148,000 is that the budget impact of the dispatch terminal no, that's the, three. the three positions that's what I'm Guys, I mean, I'm sitting. I'm sitting here, and it's, it, I'm, I'm conflicted because, like I said, health, safety, and welfare is the most important thing. I, I believe in our position here, but you're also talking about doing something in a time where 
inflation is where it is and talking about almost doubling, eight going over 13%. And so it, it does, it, it, it's very conflicting, but at the same time, I, I think about a woman at home giving, giving birth. I think about an elderly lady who's fallen, you know, um, and like he said, let's say you have a house fire and you're rolling three fire departments out to it and you need somebody else to answer that phone. Um, seconds might. So um, I didn't mention TI just off a of whim. It's, uh, I mean, the Davenport study said we need to get to six to 10. I mean, um, up to 10 cent in the next three to six years. Yeah, that was one line of the capital A we talked about. Yeah. So, so Sh Sheriff, let me ask you another question. Sorry if you hate to bother you again. How, how many vacant positions you got right now? Uh, how about deputies? I probably hate asking that question in the public. That's probably not real safe. I'm <laughs> sorry. I should. I just thought about what I asked. <laughs> Basically, we're fully staffed as of this month, April 1st, but um, we're probably going to be one short again at the end of this month. Okay. Your two vacant dispatch positions, are they included in the eight? Or? No, no, ma'am. They were, they were part of the 10 that we already had. 10, okay. So when you fill those, you'll have 10. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm not saying yay or nay on that yet, but I'm, let me say, let me ask this question, you know, and this is not for the sheriff. So if you're talking about a tax increase, wouldn't that be contradictory with the Davenport told us because we got so much money in the general fund? Why wouldn't we just, because if he's got vacant positions and it's going to be some tailings there, I don't see how you're going to have to, you need to raise, the next thing you know, we're doing the same thing we Davenport told us not to do is that we're, we're blowing smoke over here, raising taxes, then we're going to increase the general fund again. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not increasing the general, I'm not raising taxes and increase the general fund with tailings. Do you see what I'm saying? But then we go back to, then you're going to the general fund for operating. Operational costs. Of operational costs. Oh. It's but, one thing going into the general fund for capital improvements. I get that, but... But he's got vacant positions and always will have them. It's a game. I mean, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a little bit. It's, see what I'm saying? If he's got. Oh, you're talking about unencumbered balances because of a, right. a, a, an open. Well, well, then he would ask for less money the following year if he's got carryover. Follow what I'm saying? If he if his vacant yeah, position. Yeah, but he needs money dedicated to so he can hire the people. I get that part. I'm not arguing that. But what I'm getting at is think about what the Davenport, I get it, operation capital, I get that. <laughs> but what if he loses three officers this year and da 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 and that goes on and we done added the money to it and then but yeah, we got revenue and then all of a sudden at the end of the year, because the revenue is a moving target. I mean it's a moving target. And then at the end of the year, Katie goes, well, we got a surplus now of another 300. And I said, well, golly, man, we didn't raise taxes two cents. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You can always lower the tax rate to offset. But we ain't never done that. When you budget salaries, <laughs> <laughs> when you budget salaries, let's say for the sheriff's department, do you budget based on full staffing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Full staffing at full. current level. Right, for, a, for approved position. So if he has eight dispatchers right now, but is seeking to have 10, are you budgeting for eight as current level? No, he has 10 approved dispatchers. 10 approved, positions. I see, so okay. Five okay. of them are fully local funded. Gotcha. Let me ask another question, don't piggyback on what you said. If he's got one vacant position and we get a 5% increase, does that vacant position get a 5% increase? Yes. 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 Okay, the state don't do that. The salaries are. Right. Done at okay. the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I was asking earlier, but, but they said not to take it out of operational costs. That's the same thing I was talking about doing, because you're talking about giving him what he needs and instead of a tax increase. And I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with going into the general fund and giving the sheriff what he needs on dispatch. But they just mentioned earlier about not using it for operational costs. So that's yeah, I, and I agree with them totally. Mm -hmm. But 
if we can't fill positions and we get a, and we and, and we increase our funding again, I am gonna be upset, <laughs> right? <laughs> So you, well, I mean, I follow right, what you're right, saying. Right, right, right. Yeah, because we said saying. we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to stop that. That's the Davenport helped us with that. We increased three hundred some thousand dollars over the years, y'all. Mm -hmm. Even with level funding with the school. Gotcha. Yeah. You, you with me? Mm -hmm. Because of deferred initiatives and deferred maintenance stuff that we, the money wasn't being used. So right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have that. I mean, I just anyway. I, I don't. Mr. Costner, one thing in your talking points, only actual debt service is budgeted. Fulfilling recommendation from Davenport will re require an additional $153,000. What, fulfilling which recommendation was that from if, Davenport if about borrowing money? Yes, if, no, if you'll recall that they suggested that we pick up the pace that we're paying off debt. Oh, that, we're, okay. And I'm being a little conservative here thinking we gotcha. might need that Right. Depending on what happens with the with the economy. Um, and if I can, Madam Chairman and uh, Mr. Bowen, not to argue, just because I, I came from the state background like yourself. Right. Um, you know, there's new hires. Right. We, we often fought the issue of we were bringing in a new hire and they were surpassing the salary of somebody who was doing the exact same job and had been right. there for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, that, so that, you know, that 5% those increases, I don't know your agency, but my agency, they were bringing in people and overstepping people who had been there given time, that sort of thing. The 5%, I would still argue, would be a retention factor. Um, I think the sheriff will tell you, he's had a lot of turnover and he's trained a lot of people and they went someplace else. Mm I guess my, my biggest thing is, let me just say it just for true. If I'm a citizen out there, and I've, he I've heard this, so we, we, we hired an economic development person, we hired a, a coordinator, but we never mentioned raising taxes two cents. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about dispatches, and we talk about we've got to raise taxes. That's, that's what bothers me, and I hear it from people. <laughs> so, and that's why I say, if we... I'll raise taxes two cents, but if I got us, if we go over again and it's more money, we have we have done the citizens an injustice. No, I don't disagree. That's why I said you you can always, and and you're right. I don't see people lowering taxes. You know you don't. Right. But that's what you should do to offset. If you get that balance up, you should be willing to offset instead of looking for somewhere to to plant a tree and grow. If you don't need it, don't take it. See, See, we had the money. I agree with you. Put it higher. Say what? So I said I agree, I agree with you. But I'm, and I'm not. I, let me back up. I hope I'm not saying anything bad about Greg and, and, and Buddy. Thank God we got them. I mean, I think I think Ted made some good hires. But what I'm saying is, is you know, okay. Well, how did we absorb that? <laughs> you with me? Because it's. Lynn, are you with me on this? I mean, how do, how do we absorb that and we didn't have to raise taxes? You, you absorbed it in, in last year's budget. Right. Um, and I'm not sure. What next year is going to bring. What next year is going right, to bring. Right, right. Because you, you may lose, let's say another person retires. So that's, that's but eventually if you, get, if you fill all the positions, then it'll start going boom to boom, boom, you know, the cost. And, and right. I know you absorbed it um, from, um, it took time to, for me to onboard, I was onboarding in August, late, you know, so you were pretty much through two months of your year. When I came in, I came in under what was budgeted, you know, from what was anticipated. Right. And then um, we had um, several recruitment, it took us two recruitments to find Mr. Zobie. So we were pretty much halfway through the year before we had both of those positions filled. So it was absorbed from letting them go vacant not for lack of effort, okay, but right. letting, letting them go vacant for that period of time, and then you had some savings on the salary for the county administrator. So that's how they were absorbed. And we actually went, this is probably before your time too, Mr. Costin, we actually hired another animal control officer, right? And mm -hmm. we didn't, we didn't we, did we increase taxes? And we did that? some internal raising. Over yeah, we did run. some internal raising too, you're right, to, to try to get them at level like we should be. Competitive. 
Well, I guess, I guess in, to go to your question, I mean, I understand, I mean, you're talking about roughly $20,000 where you came in under and some stuff that was budgeted, but where was it pulled from originally? Because 20000 don't make up 170-something. So, so what you, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I, don't, I didn't mean to, oh God, let me explain that to me again, say that again to me. So. Where did it originally come from? Was it pulled from the general fund? Ideally, it's absorbed into the general fund budget itself. You know, you, the ideal scenario for a typical year is you don't spend everything, but you, you collect everything. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't spend your entire general fund budget for the year, it's, it's just absorbed. And then, and then Pennell had revenue. The sales tax went well, went well. All that, all that brings it up too. It, what, what, and I get, I get what Ted's going to, and 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 Katie. Now, if we have a bad recession year, we really might put ourselves in a in a bad situation. That's what I'm saying. Because right. where are you sustaining it from? Because we're getting so much revenue. That, that's right. Revenue is good right now. Yeah. I got you. But that's exactly why I thought best not to. Do that extra. I, I, yeah, I hear. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because the other question in the economy. Sheriff, do you have to go zero to three? Can you take a little baby step? <laughs> well, three is optimal. Uh, but I guess you can't take baby steps if you have to. Baby steps are better than no steps. <laughs> I'm trying to. The reason why I say that is I, I don't want to take two. Oh, it's a big plunge, and I'm scared it could haunt me the other way. You understand what I'm saying? But I, I really hate to raise taxes with the amount of money we have in our general fund right now. But I get the operating. I get that. You're right. That's, that sustains all the time. And the other time is one-time money. And, and Capital if, if I may, historically, uh, that uh, you know, it's been there. It's always been like that. We're trying to change that. We're trying mm -hmm. to spend down some of that capital money. Some, you right. know, because you know, it is taxpayers' money. But all it's been doing is sitting there on an interest. It hasn't right. been put to work. And there's some things that you can see on that ARPA list. There's some things that need some work. Yeah. Yes. And I know I know Ted's over there thinking. You know, I know how he thinks. I don't got to know this guy a little bit. He's thinking, well, y'all go ahead and get that solar power going. You'll be all right, too. You'll help I wouldn't go over there. I wouldn't go over there. <laughs> you, you were thinking it, though. I wouldn't go there. But when were you thinking it? I was thinking it. <laughs> I was thinking it. That's right. Mr. Hawthorne, what were you thinking? <laughs> I, I can that. promise you, I have, I'd have a few less gray hairs right now. <laughs> Every wish could be granted. Uh, but yeah, to you know, into Davenport's credit, into Miss Tomer's credit, and uh, uh, solar revenue was not anticipated. Yeah, you know, I know, I got you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, again, you know, yeah. it falls back on that. Uh, I'm not counting chickens until they hatch. Mm -hmm. So the. You know, the, the crew tanker truck, mm -hmm. we don't have it in here. We can't cover it unless you want to increase the tax. We, we can't cover it, but we know in the, in, you know in the back of our mind, we've got ARPA funds. We've right. got ARPA mm -hmm. funds. As long as we don't covered. have them in our hand yet, so I don't want to commit anything. I understand. As long as it's covered one way or the other. Um, wait, I want to get the sheriff a dispatcher. <laughs> If we can start with baby steps, we'll do, you know. What are, you, what are you talking about with one? Yeah, I, I, I was the one about this swamp, so we just thought it had to be at least two to get them started with. To get those three people in there when, I mean, to keep two people in there all the time. Yes, me too. Because it's up 24 7, I got you. So three three would give you a little bit. Three would be optimal. Uh, <laughs> we talk a minimum of two, maximum of three. Now I could. I'm I'm stumped. I want to give them to him. So that's why I'm looking at y'all. How do we give them to him? <laughs> You don't want to give it to the sheriff. You want to give it to the community is what you want to do. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> giving them to him is giving it to him. Right. Yeah. Do we think we can squeeze out 100000 We think we can squeeze out 100000 without doing? Anything? But, but we will be cutting other places. Yeah, I get it. 
Do we know where we'd be cutting? Yeah. Well, triage. Let's use that word. Who? Triage. In other words, if you got a if you got a scratch on your arm and a man's laying there with a severed arm, who gets right. to say? Yeah. Triage. Where are you gonna take them? Yeah. Well, not a hundred thousand. That'll get you to the two one. A hundred thousand's a penny on the real estate. That's it. Hundred thousand's a penny on the real estate. That would be perhaps the easiest way to do it. Um, other than Ms. Tomer and I going through and, and trying to take ten thousand here, ten thousand here, fifteen thousand over there, and I don't know where we'd be taking it from. So you're saying increasing real estate by a penny? That would be the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Go up one penny, hundred thousand. That would cover. We think that would cover two positions. I'll say it. I'm okay with that. I'll take the beating, as long as these citizens got somebody to answer the phone. I'll take the beating. It's the right thing to do. So I'm hearing the board's consensus. It's going up one per one, one cent. One cent on the real estate. I'm good with it. Directed towards the dispatchers. Two dispatchers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hope we make it. A, I'm, no, I'm fine with the dispatchers. I'm just wondering. You, you see how I've been thinking my numbers and crunching my numbers. So. If that inflation don't hit like it's planned, we can always reduce. And you know you're going to remind us of that conversation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we had some personal, you know, we know that the personal property, we're going to work on that a little bit. Um, we're going to leave that as is, right? That's the right. recommendation to, to leave it as is, mm -hmm. which is in line with um, all the localities around us, with the exception of two, one of which is lowered, and one of which is risen, but put theirs up. One cent on the real estate, that's one cent per hundred. And according to Davenport, that gets us about 100,000, which would cover this. And we'll cover the two dispatchers. All right, the ends have spoken. The middle's got to come to something. <laughs> I'm not sure. Should we gain? Mm -hmm. That's what I can't figure that out. That's what mathematically I can't figure that out. Need a calculator. Okay. Any other questions tonight? Comments? So we, he's got to get a. So we talking about going up at one cent? Is that what y'all say? For the dispatchers. And earmark for the dispatchers. We got to go up on taxes, Sherman. You can't stay in the same place. I mean, it's got to go up sooner or later. What, what is it right now? 50? 48. 48. 48. Sherman's always had this thing. He don't want to go with 50. He, he, he wouldn't be. <laughs> the, the problem I have with it when I'm worried about on that is that, um, you know, the, there's a reason why the ARBA funds are coming again because there's some concern about is the economy, are we going to get back on our feet? And gas prices is going up. And, um, 
and, and, I'm, and you know, and we're going to raise taxes, and we're going to raise taxes. <laughs> and then, so that <laughs> and we're talking sick. about covering the dispatchers, but then you said a special tax to increase the emergency service funding. You so. Yeah, I did. Did I say that? You did say that. I did say that. And I, and I, but, but won't you talk about, like, during the election year doing that next year or the following year or something? People ain't gonna like me no more. I've already been told that. So, <laughs> they stick a fork in me. I'm done. They don't want me anymore. So, but that's something that we have got to get. Um, I mean, we are charge. You're right. We're in charge of. How many times you say this? Safety and public Health safety. Health, safety, and welfare. Yeah. So, um, I mean, if the somebody's if somebody's got to dial nine one one, somebody's got to show up, man. I got, I got you. <laughs> But Not to what degree are we going to increase taxes to do to make sure we get that covered? Right. Matt, Matt I'm sure there's another option. Uh, I'll let Ms. Tober cover that. There's a possibility of finding it in carryover from fiscal year 22, but you have to have a plan to sustain it moving forward. Right. So it's it's not out of the question to find it somewhere. For one time. One time. You'll see a call from our individual meetings right now, and let me be very, very cautious. Right now, revenues ahead of expenditures, so there could be some carryover. But as Ms. Tomer said, that gets you through a year. You got to pick it up and carry it. That's that's the the, the, um, the school resource officers. That's why I went into those details. Yeah, it's grant funded. But eventually, you got to keep yeah. that position. Right, as long as that. Yeah. But can you explain you on your talking points? You said the budget balanced at forty some million dollars, and that's by bring, taking three hundred and some thousand out of the general, general, general reserve account. Mm -hmm. So if if revenues are ahead of expenditures, why are we having to pull money from the general reserve account to get the budget to balance? Because we don't know how far ahead they will be, and we still have six six weeks to go. And as Ms. Tomer said, anything can happen. So this is a budget. Uh, if we find that you know you you end up far enough ahead, and you can use the carryover to pick up the dispatchers, and you still have money left over, that goes back into your reserves. And if I may add, you know what we're looking at right now is post audit. I mean pre audit. So when the fiscal year closes because we are based on a cost accrual basis, the numbers that we're looking at right now, until it's finalized, they're, they're, they're technically not, you know, dependable. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. They're a guideline, they're cautiously optimistic, like you said, but they're not. Let me, let me just put it another way, and not to be flippant, budgeting is more art than science. You really do have yeah, to yeah. kind of look at trends and well, guys, let me ask gut you. feelings, like the economy. I mean, it, 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 we're all sitting here, kind of, ha we have a gut feeling about what's going to happen with the economy, somewhere between 8 and 13. Well, let me ask you this, because I just don't know. Can we, can we get to the July 1, get the finalized numbers, and if the money's not there, then can we raise the rate one cent afterwards if the carryover was not there? Is that, is that legal? Can that be done? But I mean, we would, we we would have an idea, wouldn't we, where we're at? Just like I said, I mean, I, I agree with y'all, and that's what I said. You know, it, it's uh, it's a double-edged sword here, the health and safety and welfare of the citizens. But you're also talking about what we're facing right now with inflation. I mean, that's that's what I was talking about earlier. But at the end of the day. What's most important? Just want to answer the phone. This is by far the worst time. I know. By far. What if, what if um, you said it too? It was. Uh, Madam Chair, Ms., uh, to, if I could, to Mr. Rourke's point about make, going back and making changes, yeah, you can go back and make changes, including a tax increase. The problem is when it, the burden you place on the constitutional officers to process those bills and get those bills out and you don't want to do it twice yeah mm -hmm. all right you um 
<laughs> well, this, this board of supervisors thing is a lot of fun, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> let me let me ask you, um, what, what was the, so Amelia, let's go back to the school system. Hold this, we're going to put this in a box over here for a second. Now. Mm -hmm. So, what was, <laughs> being creative here. So, what was the two programs? It was trades and... Early child development. Early early, childhood and, development. and Amelia didn't agree with their, their, their questioning the early childhood development. And, and our share was 100 and what? 104. 104, I think is what it was. And that's for both of them? Both programs. And that's an increase. That's for both that's what... programs, our share. So if Amelia doesn't fund the early childhood, they would need more than the additional 104? It's my understanding, based on her answer, that it's 100, possibly 100% 100 funding for the early child care and the 60% for the building trades is what that figure is based on. Uh, I, I may be wrong, but that's so what. So I Amelia understood. doesn't have any. They don't have any students in that particular early childhood. I don't know. She said that there was just a contention 100%. about that program. Uh, that's probably what it is. You, you cut that from that. I mean, if the it is called Amelia not away technical center. And if the school board is not unanimous with their decision on the budget, if they're not unanimous with this, with the two courses, if you cut the funding from one of those courses, that early childhood development, then, you know, we can probably squeak it in with the carry over here without a tax increase. Yeah, so the anticipated F22 carryover uh, discretionary fund is estimated at $100,000, right? But we talked about spending some of that. That's that's what we were saying about you need to be aware, cognizant that you've got six more weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that this is an ideal plan if everything works out. But but technically, if we don't spend that, we're we're just about really there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we. What in the world could go wrong, y'all? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I didn't curse it. Let me give you some good news and some bad news. Okay. Um, so uh, the, 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 uh, at the main meeting, uh, Ms. Foster will come. Mr. Vaughan, you know, Mr. Vaughan, you know, because you're the representative uh, for the CRC, for uh, a contribution towards a regional economic development effort. And that's where we were thinking if you wanted to do that, to pull it out of this year's budget, FY22, and not take it out of 23. That's where we saw that money coming from if that's what you all wanted to do from the board's discretionary fund. That's that why it's 50,000. Mm -hmm. It's 50,000. Oh, I got you. So if we took that, then we got to budget for the, uh, the If you take it now, you don't have to budget for it next year. You're right, if you but take it now, it cuts into your discretionary fund carryover. Right. And see, I don't even know if everybody's going We we you you guys haven't been educated on that yet and we have, the, we have the next one. Yeah. It'll be in the board packet for May. And the concern on that is, well, are we going to be doing the same thing we did before? Is you get, you, like we paid so much money and then we don't get anything out of it. But, it, you know, if we had economic development going on, we wouldn't be in here talking about $100,000. Mm -hmm. you know, so, see, that, that keeps you from the raising your real estate tax. The more economic development you have. Oh Lordy! Why put put the what else for tonight? Katie, I have one question just about the format of this these nice summary sheets she gave us. We've got fiscal year twenty twenty actual twenty one actual, then amended budget. What does that column represent? What period of time is that? It's up to current, current year. Yes. Current year to a given date. Correct. Probably Whatever that, date you know that we run weeks. that for four. And what I'm looking at school fund expenses. Amended budget, thirty-eight point eight million. They've had all of those budget adjustments for the, the CARES and ESSER funding. 
Did we ever get a report as to where that money has been spent at yet? What money they have spent of that 10 million? All I've seen is what you've seen. And what their projection for the remainder is? I mean, the, th the thing to do, I hate saying it too, the only thing to do is to raise one cent and let's hear what the public got to say. And, but, but make sure that it's clear that it's for the dispatch. For the dispatch. dispatches. Yeah. It's not to whatever. I mean, yeah, I mean, this, I mean, obviously it goes to a public hearing and they'll get to say. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we would definitely hear from them. So in the detail packets, which are the two thick ones up here, we would increase salary for dispatchers, the ancillary aspects of insurance and retirement that we would make those adjustments there. We'd show it in the summary, sh the summary sheets, the executive, what I like to call the executive summary sheets. And we'd uh, include it in the totals on, on the uh, ad. To be clear, a one cent increase in real estate would be advertised and we would be amending the budgets to reflect two dispatchers. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Is that the final consensus of the board in giving staff direction to go ahead and advertise June 8th, hearing June 16th, and then a... June 8th is a Wednesday, don't it would be nine. No, well, June, June 8th is the advertisement. Oh, advertisement, excuse me. Yeah, June 8th is the advertisement. Okay. So then, the, not the next day, but the following week, that next Thursday, your regular board meeting, the 16th, right. would be your public hearing. Then the 23rd would be to adopt. 20, right. You can adopt as early as the 23rd. Seven days later. So then are you still recommending another special tax for increased funding of emergency uh, services? I would like for, not, not not on this budget, there's no way we're going to get there, but um, I think and, um, the, uh, Chief Tomer's out there, he was one of the people, not, not that I blame him on a tax on you, Chief Tomer, not at all, but he gave us some options years ago. Some, some places like a dwelling, some people do on the plat, like if you own a plat of land, I don't know what's, um, you know, but what's the best way? But there are options out there. I'm pretty sure that we can do that. Um, and I think that's a direction we're going to have to head because um, it's the 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 calls are in the county. Mm -hmm. You know, the ninety percent percentages, and we, you know, technically, let's let's say what it is. We don't have a fire department. <laughs> the county don't have a fire department. You know, I mean, but but we rely on them. So, and, and to your point, there, Steve, I, I, that's what I thought that. When, when you talk about that fire tax, I thought that with Buddy and the departments and yourself that everybody was going to bring some sort of a plan together with that separate funding and everything with that. So, right. Mm -hmm. That's for the capital expenditures or, or yep. apparatus. Yep. Okay. Right. And what Mr. Hyde has been doing is pulling in from all the, the different organizations what they have when it was purchased, what's the anticipated mm -hmm. lifetime, and in a nice CIP, and again, this is rudimentary, you start banking that money. That's right. So that basically when you get to the year that you need to purchase it, you may not have all of it, but you got a nice down payment and you know what your financing plan is. Yeah. Right. And I, I agree, separate it just like we did to LRA and all that stuff, that'd be right. a great idea. And, I, and that's another thing, too. I found that, you know, and we've already known this, but it's a different relationship. You've said a long time to, before, Sherman. There's a different relationships between the fire departments and the towns and, and, um, and emergency services, and we, we just need to um, um, be supportive of them as much as we can. So, um, but, so Ted, can we put that on the do list next sure. fiscal year? And, and I just went into 59 or 60, but that's okay. <laughs> 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 who's counting? Yeah, who's counting? <laughs> right. Well, I, I didn't come here to just ask for a one cent increase, but here we are. But we do. I, I, what if that one person gets sick? You would be up creek, wouldn't you, Sheriff? You would. I mean, I, I mean, a deputy would have to go in there and start being this. They've done that. Uh, Y'all recall last uh, July when I came in here, I didn't have but three dispatchers. Mm -hmm. We went down to three dispatchers. Uh, both had life issues, life changes, took different jobs. 
Right. And we got down to three certified dispatchers. So there was a time I sat in there a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, and, and it's kind of, it's kind of like, it's. I don't, I don't want to. I'm not saying that maybe the word's not contradictory, but we here we are. We're gonna put a lot of money into our radio system, but let's say what it is. If nobody pushes that button, right. <laughs> we, we don't have anything. <laughs> right, right. It's the people still. That's the important part. So, but at the same time, we don't want them sitting there and it's going over to Farmville either. Mm -hmm. So well, we can, real, yeah. you want us to real, uh, advertise, uh, make the adjustments to put in two dispatchers, increase the real estate rate one cent, mm -hmm. and advertise June eighth for hearing on the sixteenth regular regular meeting. Same time. Do you want to go at seven o'clock or do you want to uh, and then um, and we'll have a special meeting. No, no sooner than the 23rd for you all to uh, act. What I can't figure out is how I made a motion to censor somebody and that same person made me raise taxes one cent. Isn't that a weird, isn't, it, isn't this political stuff kind of odd to you? Hey, it's easy, <laughs> listen. It's easy to it's, it's, it's the right thing. It's the right thing. Citizens take care of. It's the right thing. All right. Any more budget comments? Please, I hope not. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I move. We were. We have a move to adjourn. Yes. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, All right. Good, is good job, Madam Chair. <laughs> Oh. I want to thank you all too. I want to thank you all for the best years of course. My office has been here since I've been in here. I appreciate it. Right. Uh, and we're going to thank yeah. you. We're doing a right. good job. Just, get yeah. just, make, just make sure you bring your weapon in here in June when we say. <laughs> 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 Let me get off the radio here. <laughs> no. To take this right video me. No, no, no. It, it, you know, one of the things that really woke me up was. Uh, it was downtown Richmond. I don't know if y'all saw it on the news, but the lady got hit by a car or pregnant or something, and nobody showed up for an hour downtown Richmond. You don't have to go that far. I mean, far. that's like, what in the world, man? You don't man? have to go that far. We had that happen in Nottaway. Oh. Yeah, we've had some long calls. They didn't show up. We've had some long calls. Oh, All right. Katie. Oh. Who's that? Katie and yeah. Ted, I'm... Y'all did a good job on the budget. I mean, I know, Katie, you know, you said you yeah, credit, but thank you. You know, we heck of uh, a lot of work. You know. Yeah. What does she mean? Yeah. <laughs> you did.